your voice to the Lord today. God, we thank you, Lord. You said it. Hallelujah. You said it. If you said it, God, we need to believe it. And if we believe it, God, it's going to be done. Thank you, Lord, today. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, God. Hallelujah for your mighty word today. Hallelujah, you're so good to us, oh God, we give you praise. You said it, and I believe it. You said it, it is done. Oh, you said it, and I believe it. You said it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated today. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, how good God is. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. And all the time. Amen. Today I'm going to be preaching to you a message called process. Process. Galatians 6 9 says this, and let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we will reap if we faint not. I remember one time early in my years when somebody first tried to introduce me to the Lord, it was in 1992. I was a ranch hand, believe it or not, black man in Tucumcari, New Mexico, on a ranch, <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere. Somebody say, how'd you get there? It's a long story. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but I was out working on that ranch. This is in 1992. And, you know, they was trying to teach me something about the Bible, and, you know, I took everything at that point in time in my life to the extreme. And the guy was telling me that if I do this and that, God's got to do this for me. You know, it was kind of a, uh, I think it was kind of an immature teaching for me at that moment because after about three or four weeks of me serving God, I thought, well, my three or four weeks for me is doing good. So I got up on a haystack. It was pretty tall. And I got up on that haystack, and I yelled up to the sky. And I said, okay, God, I've been doing good for a while. Now you come down here and you bless me. And needless to say, I had some of the two of the worst days of my life. <laughs> that was not the smartest thing to do. Amen. It is sad to say that a lot of Christians live their life trying to demand God to do something. I came to tell you that God is, is not like a dog where we, well, he will obey your every command. We need to stop treating God like a dog and unscramble the word and treat him like G-O-D. It is easy to catch an attitude with God when we've been waiting on something for a while, like waiting to get married. Dealing with the unsaved loved ones, dealing with disobedient children, dealing with the lack of money, which is the root of all evil. I mean, the love of money is the root of all evil, but sometimes we get the two mixed up. Waiting on healing in your body or waiting on your ministry to be fulfilled. And when those things begin 
to take a long time in our life, we begin to get an attitude with God. Amen. A lot of times when we are waiting on these things, we get discouraged because we are not seeing the results we think we should see. Feelings of giving up. Feelings of giving up begin to hit us, causing us to throw in the towel and quick. Just because it's not happening on our time and just because he's not doing it how we say do it, if we get those feelings of discouragement and depression and we just want to throw in the towel and quit and walk away from the Almighty. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 7 through 9 says this. Look what he said. He began to pray to God. Jeremiah was a prophet and he began to pray to God. He says, oh Lord, you have deceived me and I was deceived. You are stronger than I and I and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. He says, then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak anymore in his name. I mean, Jeremiah got an attitude with God. He was preaching to people and they would do nothing but mock him. They was not responding like sometimes us preachers want people to respond. They wasn't doing any of that. And he says, God, how is it possible that you're giving me the words to speak and these people are not responding to the things that I say? He says, then I said, verse 9, I would not make mention no more of him, nor speak any more in his name. He says, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stand. He said, it was still, even though I had an attitude, even though I said I'm not going to speak any more in his name, he said that word was still like fire. It was still like fire in me. I could not get away from it. Well, I tell you today, go ahead and keep your attitude that you got. Just because you have an attitude with God don't mean you're going to get away from him. He's going to still keep coming at you and coming at you and coming at you. Hallelujah. He don't give up on you like you give up on him. Mm. Hallelujah. Jeremiah was frustrated. Excuse me. Jeremiah was no doubt a prophet of God. Jeremiah understood clearly that God was bigger and stronger than he was. Do we realize that? This is the first thing that we need to realize about God is that he's bigger. He's stronger. He's wiser. Hallelujah. And he knows what he's doing. Even if it seems like he don't. Jeremiah was frustrated because the word of the Lord came to him strong to preach to a certain group of people. But all they would do was mock him and laugh at him. He said, ever since I started preaching, the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me. It was made a shame to me. It was made a derision unto me. I was a laughing stock. They did not take me serious. He was upset. Trying to figure it out. See, sometimes the things of God is a little confusing to us. <laughs> See, it don't matter about other people sometimes. It matters about us. It matters about my attitude. It matters about how I'm dealing with God. Amen. Then Jeremiah determined in his mind if all, if this is all he is going to get out of preaching God's word, he was just going to throw in the towel and quit. This all I'm going to get out of it? He says, I'm just going to throw in the towel. What is your attitude towards God today? Is things not working out the way you thought it was supposed to work out? Do you think God just put you down on earth to fend for yourself and that he's never going to help you? Do you think God doesn't care about you because you've been through a couple of rough times in your life? Does it seem like you take two steps, for, one step forward and two steps back? Are you ready to throw in the towel? 
I came to give you two words today. Don't quit. Don't quit. If you quit, get back up. Amen. Get up. Dust yourself off. Hallelujah. Get back and start again. Amen. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 through 7 says this. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares on him, for he cares for you. How many of you know that when you are serving God, it is a process to get, diff to, get to different places and to different levels with him? It's a process, amen. The word process means a natural phenomenon marked by gradual changes that lead toward a particular re result. In other words, it's a rare or significant fact or event marked by gradual changes that lead towards particular results. Am I the only one in this room, or have you been through so big of a trial you think, man, after I get through this trial, I'm going to be doing good, only to find yourself going through even a bigger trial than the one you just had? It's gradual changes that leads towards a particular result. Think about this. Do you walk up to a cow and say, got cheese? No, you walk up to a cow and say, got milk. Cheese only come after the milk has been processed. One study has shown that Americans alone ate over 8.8 .8 billion pounds of cheese a year with a market value of $39.9 billion. I love cheese, but milk has to go through a nasty process to become cheese. Amen. It does. The milk has to become curdled and moldy before it reach its full potential. It just don't turn into cheese. You don't just milk the cow, put it in the refrigerator, and it becomes cheese. No, it goes through a spoiling process. Who would have thought that something so nasty <laughs> would be worth so much? Amen. Who would have thought that such a nasty process would turn into a great thing? That's what I came to tell you today. After you finish going through the process, you will reach your full potential and become a great value and become the great person that, that you are called to be. But it's going to get a little moldy and it's going to get a little musty and it's going to get a little stinky and it's going to hurt a little bit. Hallelujah. But when God finished with you, hallelujah, when he finished with you, you're going to come out to be something great. Amen. Even though the process is curdled and sour and moldy and stinky and painful and heartbreaking and depressing and discouraging at times, at the end of God's process, you're going to be worth so much value. Hallelujah. You just got to keep in the fight. Hallelujah. Get up. I say get up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel my helper in the building today. Hallelujah. The ghost is trying to talk to somebody. Get back up and fight again. Hallelujah. I know you gave up on me a long time ago, but I'm walking to you, and I'm hoping that today you will walk towards me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Real peace is not the absence of trouble. Real peace is feeling the presence of God in the midst of our trouble. 
Sometimes we lose our peace when we take the will from God's hand. Sometimes God is driving us along and we don't like the route he's taking. And we say, God, let me get the will for a little while. You didn't go around such and such block where I wanted to go to. I wanted to go past Hobby Lobby. Hallelujah. You brought me by Walmart. Mm. I hope you feel the Holy Ghost in here today. We get mad when God is not on demand like Comcast Cable. But a mature Christian waits on God until he brings it to pass. No matter how many tears he cries, hallelujah, hallelujah, he gets back up and say, God, this hurts a little bit, but I'm going to keep on, keep on, keeping on. Amen. Truth be told, in times past, I have waited years for God to use me and get my life back on track. Hallelujah. A lot of times I wanted to give up and quit because the situation stunk. <laughs> it stunk. Hallelujah. I was mad at this. I was mad at that. I was mad at the church. I was mad at everything back then. Hallelujah. I was so mad. But hallelujah, one night... It was a cold night, and that old van broke down on the middle of the side of the road after I had just finished the detail. And ah, that's when God wanted to have a conversation with me. Hallelujah. The motor went out, so you can't run the heat. I'm on the side of the road. I called Pops. I said, I'm going to need you to come tow me. He said, well, I can't get to you for about a few hours. I said, okay, don't worry about it. But oh, my God. When I was on the side of that road, God began to talk to me. He said, do you love the church like I do? No, Lord, you know I don't. I had to tell the truth. Tell the truth, stay in the church, right? I'm still here. <laughs> I said, God, I don't love it like you do. He said, while the church was yet sinners, I died for them. I died for them. See, sometimes we get an attitude with the church. We get an attitude with God. Hallelujah. But we're not looking through his eyes. We're not looking how he look. We're looking how we look. We're walking in the flesh and not the spirit. Because had we been walking by the spirit, it wouldn't matter what the church did to me. It don't matter, hallelujah, it don't matter what God brought me through. It don't matter the process, hallelujah. I'm going to keep pushing, amen. I'm going to keep pushing, praise God, hallelujah. Why did it take so long? Why, why does God take so long? Why does God take so long? See, we have those questions. For some of us, it's solid frustrations. We might not be telling nobody. But we wonder, why is it taking so long? But I believe there's scriptures in the Bible that tells us why. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, we're going to start at 1 through 5. We're going to read a little bit through that chapter. But look how God began to talk to his people because he was getting ready to do something significant in their life. They had been in the wilderness a long time. They have suffered for a long time. And he was getting ready to bring them to a promised place. He was getting ready to bring them to a good place in their life. And he began to talk to them. And he began to say this. He says, be careful to obey all my commands I am giving you today. You will live and multiply and you will enter and occupy the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these 40 years, humbling you, uh-oh, testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would obey his command. See, that's what it's all about. That's what your testing is all about. It, he's just wondering if you're going to listen to him. He's wondering if you're going to obey him, even if, even if you don't get what you want. He wants to know. If you're going to still serve him and obey his commands, amen. The scripture says he's testing you. He's humbling you. He's bringing you low. He's bringing that pride out of your life. 
Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a few food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you know that you don't live by bread alone? We got to have the word of God to get you this life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For all these 40 years, your clothes did not wear out. Your feet didn't blister or swell. Think about it. Just as your parents discipline a child and the Lord your God discipline, discipline you for your own good. And we're going to keep reading. So obey the commands of the Lord your God by walking his ways and fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. Now God began to tell him what he's going to do. He told them why they hadn't got there yet. Now he's telling them what he's going to do. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, verse 7, of flowing streams and pools of water and fountains and springs that gush out in the valley and hills. It is a land of wheat and barley and grapevines and fig trees and pomegranates of olive oil and honey. It is a land where food is plentiful and nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is common as stone and copper is abundant in the hills. He said, you can just go in the hills. It's going to be pretty popular. It's more popular than stone. Can you imagine precious iron, copper, that you could go dig it up just like stones? That's the kind of land God was bringing them to. This is not a fairy tale. This is some real stuff. That's why at one time, Everybody in Israel, they was all owners of their land. They all own land. They all, all own a house. They all own their stuff. It says, when you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. And we're going to read a little more. It says, but that is the time to be careful. Beware that in your plenty, listen, beware in your plenty, you do not forget the Lord your God and disobey his commands regulation and decrees that I am giving you today. For when you have become full and prosperous and have built fine houses to live in, and when your flocks and your herds become very large and your silver and your gold have multiplied along with everything else, be careful. Do not become pride at that time and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Do not forget that he led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its poisonous snakes and its scorpions. Where it was so hot and dry, he gave you water from the rock, lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Can I read three more verses? He fed you with man in the wilderness, a food unknown to your ancestors, he did this to humble you and what? To test you for your, for your what? For your who? Your own good. Lord, help us. He did all this so you would never say to yourself, I have achieved this wealth with my own strength and energy. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. Amen. God allows the human race to experience the consequences of sin that entered into the world through the fall of Adam and Eve. Joseph, for an example, suffered much because of his brother's jealousy and cruelty. He was sold by his brothers into slavery and became potter for slave in Egypt. While living a God-fearing life, he was unjustly charged for immorality and thrown into prison for well over two years. God allowed Joseph to suffer all these things, because, but his end testimony was that God allowed him to go to Pharaoh's house to preserve life. God made him the head and not the tail. He made him above only and not beneath. Amen. Amen. Every time we go through a suffering thing, don't mean that God is not in it. You might not understand it, but his study was leading you, wasn't he? 
He was leading them. They was in a horrible place, but God was leading them by a cloud. And they followed that cloud. He was still leading. It might not have been the way they wanted it to be, but it, the cloud was still there. Amen. The cloud was still there. He helped Egypt prepare for the famine with the wisdom that God gave him and caused everyone to come to him to be able to eat. He told his brothers, what you meant for bad for me, what you meant for bad, God meant it for my good. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about when somebody does something bad to you. It might be God pushing on them to push on you, to push you to the blessing place that he has for you. Amen. Now, that's real preaching. This is real preaching, just in case you don't know. This is the true stuff right here. Amen. See, we can't always have a painless Pentecost. We want a painless Pentecost. We want everything to be easy without, without obstacles. Hallelujah. But that ain't the way God works. Hallelujah. Sometimes he brings you through some testing times, Lord. He brings you through some testing times. Somebody say, how long? I say, too long. But God got you. <laughs> Amen. 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 Truth be told, a man or a woman that God bring through harsh training, that God bring through harsh godly training is a man or a woman that God plans to use mightily. Is your training harsh? Is your situation harsh? Is it frustrating? Are you ready to pull out your hair? You know, I did one time. Just play. Twice. <laughs> All right, a lot of times. But the person that God brings to harsh training It might not yet appear what you shall be. Hallelujah. But when he appears, you're going to be like him. Amen. Praise God. I want you to stand with me today. Hallelujah. Praise God. I hope that wasn't too short or too long for you. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Where are you at today? Where are you at today? He came to the garden where Adam and Eve was. Adam had left this place. And God came in that garden like a daddy. Adam! Where are you? Come on from under that bed. You know, you used to chase your kid down. They knew when they was in trouble. <laughs> you got the call in their name, they say, pew. And you looking for them. They didn't hear it somewhere. That's how it was with Adam. Where are you? God's calling. He's walking. He's walking amongst us, and he's saying, where are you? Amen. Amen. Is there anybody here you just feel like the process has been too heavy? And you just on the verge of throwing it in. If you want some prayer today, we'll pray for you. We're just going to open it up for a minute. If there's anybody here like that, I'm going to ask you to come forward. And we're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Hey, I've been there a few times. Process. 
stinky, it's moldy, it's curdled, it's spoiled, it don't look appetizing. But God's still in it. He's still in it. Yeah, God will mush around in the nasty stuff and come and get you. Yes, he will. Amen. Praise God. much power in your name. 